Can everybody hear me? Is this on? Okay. Do I have to wait for Siri to tell me something, Greg? Is Siri on? We're good? It doesn't do it. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you tonight. It's the uh, Village Council meeting for the Vill uh, Royal Palm Beach. It's December 15th, 10 days. Wow. Uh, 6.30, Thursday, and we appreciate you uh, would join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, Diane, could you please let the record show that all members of the council are yes, present? Yes, Mayor, I will. And I'd like to ask, uh, get a um, consensus from the council. Just for tonight, I'd like to take our reports and move them to the end of the uh, meeting. Um, we have some, uh, some council members have some pressing issues concerning their children. And so that will at least alleviate a little time frame there. So if everyone is okay with that, we'll just do it tonight. We'll do our reports at the end. Yep. The agenda. Okay, thank you. Um, and with that, we have the, the pleasure tonight of hearing from the Executive Director of Palm Tran, right, Mr. Clinton Falls. He's here to give us a presentation and some insight to what they're up to these days. So please, let's, let's have him come up and join us. Good evening. How you doing, Good sir? Evening. Good evening. Good evening. Clinton Forbes, the executive director of Palm Tran. Um, thank you for allowing us uh, to have a few minutes on your agenda. Uh, just to update you on some of the things that are happening in Palm Tran um, and a very important project um, that uh, we're endeavoring in that will have an impact of the entire county uh, and, of course, all of all 39 municipalities. And so this, this uh, you know, we're paying homage uh, to one, update you on uh, Palm Tran, and two, just to really ask for your, you know, your collaboration and cooperation with this project uh, and increase communication. So we'll be working closely with your, your village manager uh, to, uh, to implement this project. But before we get into the, to the project, I'd just like to recognize you, you know, your leadership, um, especially in the transportation space, uh, you know, led by you know, your mayor, uh, Mayor Pinto, and of course Jeff Hemmer and, and and their stewards and and stalwarts at the transportation planning uh, agency, uh, and they represent this this village very very well. So thank you for your your leadership. And so this this is agenda. You know Palm Tran um, has been in this community for 50 years, uh, and we provide public transportation services. Uh, throughout the entire county, from Jupiter to Boca Raton, from Palm Beach Island to our western community and the Glades region. And we touch every part of this county. Um, and we do that with our fixed route bus, which is the 40-foot uh, uh, bus, the uh, paratransit service, a very worthy service for our elderly and disabled, um, and of course, our newly implemented service, which um, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how that may fit uh, within the village, and that's mobility on demand, microtransit, which is a, uh, a budding service around the country uh, that's really been effective. And we also like to uh, thank uh, your village uh, for coming out for the Tri-Cities uh, barbecue, Stuff the Bus, uh, just uh, uh, a Friday ago. And we collected hundreds of toys uh, for the Glades community. We call it the Stuff the Bus Initiative, and we partner with the Palm Beach League uh, to provide, you know, toys to, 
you know, needy kids. And so we're, we're very proud, and thank you for participating in, in your uh, efforts in that. Um, just a, a few major projects. Um, uh, of course, you know, we continue to um, improve our system. Uh, you can see the bus on the left. It's a very functional bus. It's something that we use to provide our services, our core business. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, as we uh, grow our, our organization, grow as we try to ch attract choice riders, um, we wanted to make sure that we designed our bus uh, where it's a little more attractive, has a few more curves. And so that's our newer model uh, on the left. Um, we have implemented infotainment systems in all of our buses. So all of our buses have monitors uh, where it provides customers public service information, uh, it provides real-time information of next bus. Um, we are even exploring advertising as the bus because, you know, they're smart buses. As it approach, approaches a business, it can advertise that business as it approaches that business for the customer on the bus. It also has a great security awareness feature where, um, you know, just like you go, you, you go in a, a convenience store or Walmart and you look up and you see your face on the monitor, uh, and it says, smile, you're on camera. Uh, occasionally, this monitor will switch to the, and peer into the, the vehicle and essentially let the customer see themselves on the <laughs> video. And, and that has re actually reduced incidents. Um, so that's a, a, it's been a great feature. Um, we've also implemented, again, you know, coming through pandemic, I, I'm just enormously proud of our industry and the innovation that we've implemented to protect uh, our customers and our employees uh, to mitigate, you know, the transfer of, of germs and COVID-19. And so we recently implemented a state-of-the-art air filtration system on the bus. Uh, because if you think about it, we operate in one of the most confined spaces you can operate in, a bus, you know, and, and a rail car or, or a small van. Um, it's a confined space. So we've implemented this air filtration system where, um, uh, this system it, it essentially converts humidity to molecular hydrogen peroxide, and it proactively cleans the air and surfaces in the bus. Made a, ma a major investment uh, in this system, and it's invisible. The customers can't see it, but what we have done is simulated what's happening in the bus and on our monitors for the customer. So they can see that we're looking out for their best interests in terms of their health and well-being. Another project that we implemented that's um, really taken off, uh, and that is our new state-of-the-art fare collection system. Um, and you know, it's a very complex, very sophisticated system, but I usually ask my staff to describe it like this. If you're gonna use our system and you're thinking about paying a fare, we don't want you to think much about it. You should be able to approach our bus with anything on your person and pay your fare. That's how I want you to think about it. So if you have a credit card, if you have a mobile phone, if you have a wearable, if you have cash, if you have a smart card, you should be able to pay your fare. And that's the system that we designed and delivered. Uh, and it's, it's just exploding. It's really taken off. We actually have more mobile users uh, than we have smart card users uh, in our system. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're very proud of that. And here's the uh, mobility on demand uh, <clears throat> service. I don't know. Do I have these? Uh, I see some some of the blocking the screens. I don't know if you, you're saying that same thing, but um, so mobility on demand we implemented in the Glades region in 2018, um, and of course that's a rural area. Um, we actually uh, thank you. We actually uh, removed some of our big fixed route buses because the road infrastructure uh, in the Glades region was a little challenging. There are narrow roads. Uh, some of them aren't as secure as, you know, on the eastern side of the uh, county. And so we implemented this mobility on demand service, uh, which is a, essentially a door-to-door -door service uh, for that community. But it's shared ride. It's a little different from Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft is a one-seat ride, usually one customer. This is a shared ride system. For $2, you can get, from any, you can get to any of the three cities in the Glades using this system. When we implemented it in 2018, we had about 1,000 boardings. We are now eclipsing 10,000 boardings a month. Um, wow. And it is, um, 
it is, it is a, a project that really has taken off uh, with a lot of success. Um, we have a three-pronged approach in terms of our future of transit in this community. Uh, it's basically divided uh, into short, mid, and long term. Uh, we believe that, you know, first and last mile, you know, uh, really tackling that challenge for many of our residents who live in guard-gated communities, how do I get to the bus? How do I get to the bus system? And so that's, that's something that's short term that we believe we can do really quickly. We actually want to do a pilot here in Royal Palm. Um, and you'll see that you rate it like the highest at, 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 between you know, most of the cities. And so first and last mile services, partnering with Uber and Lyft is what we are looking to do next year. Um, more midterm is more mobility on demand options. Uh, piloting some of those, uh, this, this service approach on the eastern part of the county in some cities, including uh, Royal Palm, and of course, our enhanced transit plan. That's our vision for the future. Um, where, where are we 10 to 20 years? How does our transit system look? And so we have, with the Transportation Planning Agency, looked at five north-south quarters, six east-west quarters, which we would believe with, when we enhance those quarters, we'll have one connected system. And that's called the 561 five, plan, 561. And so one of those quarters uh, that's, that's ahead of almost every other quarter is Okeechobee Boulevard, right? That comes right into your city. Uh, and, and so the vision for that uh, is to uh, ideally have a light rail system that runs from uh, downtown to uh, Royal Palm to Wellington. And so, you know, we are studying that earnestly. I will tell you that one of our best services in the county, Route 43, that traverses along the same corridor, it, you know, it's one of our top ridership uh, routes. So we believe there's a lot of potential here uh, for um, uh, enhanced premium transit on this corridor. And of course, in, your current, in the current network, we uh, provide service in this community, mostly through Route 52. And I have to tell you, Route 52 is one of our lower performing routes in this community. And that's why we believe that mobility on demand is an ideal candidate for this community, where you know, we could potentially work with you in redesigning that service, getting some savings from that service that could be potentially transferred to a mobility on demand network. Um, and so we, we want to talk more about that. Uh, Yash Nagal is here, as, long, as well as Deborah Posey, and we're looking at, into that now. Um, and here, here is, um, you know, again, some of the future projects. Um, the mobility on demand zones that we looked at was Riviera Beach, the city of Riviera Beach, and of course, Royal Palm. There are like nine others, but these uh, rank the highest when you look at, you know, the minority population um, and uh, the productivity. So our productivity is how many, essentially how many people are riding your system per hour. And typically in the industry, a, a good productivity level for transit, efficiency and effectiveness is 12 to 15 people an hour. Um, and that's how many people you're, you're carrying for your dollar. Here you can see in Royal Palm, we're Route 52, we're under six people per hour. So this service in, in this community is not so efficient. So, so we believe that introducing a mobility on demand service, a first and last mile service, uh, will enhance the mobility, enhance the transit uh, in this community. And of course, this is just a, a rendition of what I talked about earlier with uh, Okeechobee Boulevard and State Road 7, uh, where we could potentially have a light rail running right up the middle of Okeechobee Boulevard. We're studying that now. And just to move along, um, we have an aggressive plan to uh, convert our fleet to zero emissions. Um, we have, uh, through the TPA, uh, more than $12 million already in the program. We expect delivery of our first electric fleet in 24. 25% uh, of our fleet, we'd like to be converted uh, uh, to zero emission. That's 2032 in, in nearly uh, under 10 years. And we'll be doing a forum with the electric bus builders. We'll notify you of that, uh, where we'll, we'll do a dog and pony show with each vendor uh, just to you know, 
uh, for them to talk about their uh, equipment and probably take a ride in the electric uh, vehicle as well. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Yash Nagal to talk about uh, the project that we want your collaboration and cooperation with, and that what I call is our street furniture, our passenger amenities, our bus shelters, our bus benches, etc. So, guys. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, so I'll jump right into it. This really began with uh, our transportation planning agency um, designing the transit shelter design, transit shelter design guide. Um, once we had this document, we knew what kind of design, uh, what kind of you know, infrastructure we really need on the street. Shortly after, what we were able to do was issue a solicitation on the street to improve our bus shelter program. Unfortunately, that, uh, that RFP that we had back then was based on an advertising model, which is not very productive, you know, not um, for us or the advertiser because it's based on a revenue share. We weren't able to really utilize our grants that we have uh, from the TPA and, you know, other places to actually put out infrastructure. So we had to go back to the drawing board we had to come up with a uh, different strategy, and we'll talk about that later in these slides too, but uh, basically the strategy was breaking up the RFP into different parts. So we broke them up in a way where we now have one contract where we can buy the street furniture from, and then we have another contract separated where we can advertise on these things. So we'll talk about that uh, in the upcoming slides too. Here's just a quick snapshot of what we have uh, here in your area. I won't jump into a lot of it, something uh, I want everybody to pay attention to is the right top corner where you see the really the pole seated uh, situation, which is, which we call the semi seat. These are really good for an area where you do not have a lot of right of way, uh, but you want to provide some sort of seating. Uh, they're easily installable. Uh, we're able to put them out really easily. And if we don't have enough space for a shelter or a bench, you know, we utilize these so at least our passengers have somewhere to sit. So talking about the two, uh, two solicitations that we have now, one for purchasing all the amenities like benches, shelters, et cetera, and then one for going out and advertising on it. Uh, the reason we really need the advertising RFP is because the advertising revenue split that we get from this, um, this advertising uh, RFP is what allows us to offset the maintenance costs of these facilities. So both of these are really important for us. Uh, we're going to utilize our facilities development and operations team at the county for the engineering, design, and construction of these services. Uh, as I said earlier, we have some grant funding around uh, $10 million already that we'll be able to use to purchase these improvements, uh, you know, shelters and benches and other stuff that we have. We also have a lot of stops that are currently not ADA accessible. What we want to all do as a part of this program, uh, as our bus stop improvement program, is to start uh, making them ADA accessible. So that's part of this too. And in terms of timeline, uh, we're actually going to be soliciting the RFP tomorrow. So it goes on street tomorrow for purchasing the amenities. And then we're looking somewhere middle of next year to start actually construction the, uh, constructing the items that we have. So on the left, you see the, uh, our, the old or current design that we have. Um, it's been out there for a while, so it's a little bit of an older design. And on the right, you see a prototype of what we're trying to go towards. It's a lot more sleeker, a modern looking, um, something that will attract a lot more customers to our service that we're not getting right now. Some of the other amenities that are, are, that are a part of these, this improvement program include uh, real-time signs, things that on the stop just tell the customer you know where the bus is, information like that. These can also be utilized to push messages out to the customers. Um, solar lighting obviously being another amenity that is really useful not only in terms of safety but also for our bus operators as they travel in the night. It's really helpful for them to see where a passenger is standing so they know where to stop. Um, and then common things like bike racks and, and things like that. We already talked about semi seats. And then we also have a shaded seating option to sort of put in the areas where we this is sort of a hybrid of a bench and a shelter. So we're trying to provide shelter if there's not a lot of right of way available. Similar to semi seed, but it also has a little bit of shading. I just real quick had a question. So a concern that we have, well, you can answer this one. It's me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The voice <laughs> is bad. over here. Um, one of the concerns that residents had before was the reliability of a time. So to, for clarification, that last slide that you had, you can watch on real time where the bus is and when it's coming. And then can you also do that on the app now also? Because that was Correct. a no, concern. Thank so you. you can do that on the real-time app Thanks. right now. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, 
And then something we also want to modernize is the top blade that we have on our bus stop sign. So these are the three, uh, three sort of prototypes that we've been looking towards. Something to pay attention here is the QR code. Uh, what you just suggested is where we're trying to go with the QR code. We want the passenger to just point at something and then it just gives them the information of where's my next bus, you know, how far is the next bus, all that information that people look for. And that's, uh, this is a rendering of where we want to go in terms of our project. We call this the bus stop of the future. It has all of the amenities that we talked about, the new shelter, the solar lighting, the screen, everything. Um, and slowly but surely, this is where we want to move our program towards. So, Mr. Mayor and council members, uh, thank you for the time to present this informational presentation. Uh, this is the team that will be collab collaborating with your team uh, to begin implementation. We know you don't have many shelters uh, in this community, and you do have a, I, I do want to point out is, is that we did show a rendition there, but we do want to work with the different cities to ensure that we recognize the aesthetic value that is true to your city. Okay, so we're not, you know, imposing, you know, this kind of modern shelter in every city. We want to make sure that the shelter fits your community aesthetic values. Uh, and so we'll work with you um, on that. So we um, are available if you have any questions. Any questions? No? Uh, we are looking forward to get with you and your team. Uh, this is a topic that we have had a lot of conversations about. Um, the bus, shelter, the bus shelter issue is important. If we're really serious about creating a, a, a public transportation environment, um, that's a big part of it. And, and people being able to not have to stand out in the sun and no cover and some of the other things that you were mentioning, the information, it's, 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 it's a piece of the puzzle yes. of putting together what I consider the vision we have for where we think public transportation needs to go. So thank you for coming today. You and I have been trying to get together. Yeah. We'll still work on that, though. We'll make it okay? happen. We'll make it happen. Next year. Uh, I just, Go ahead. just yeah, a sure. comment, not even a, a question. I just wanted to commend you for the job that you guys do. I have a younger brother who is uh, disabled, and the uh, paratransit you have is, I mean, it really is hilarious that, you know, he goes from my mom's in, in Jupiter to his dad's and to Cuesta. It's not a, a thing, but this is a big endeavor for him in his life. He's independent, he's doing something on his own, and one of the biggest joys he gets is riding between his moms and his dads on the Palm Tram bus. So awesome. please keep that up and uh, providing that level of service for our residents. We appreciate that comment. Thank we you. appreciate it. definitely will just do. just want to uh, reiterate something you mentioned earlier because it's a topic that I, many people have heard me talking about for the last few years, just making the, the notion and concept of personal last mile support taking it from the abstract and making that something very real. Uh, merging that with the talk, the, the planning model we have called uh, transit-oriented development, we call it D, uh, TOD plus. And the plus is you get the distance around <coughs> where the transportation opportunities are. It doesn't matter if you're providing a true first mile, last mile type of solution. And my vision is maybe one day we have an all 39 cities in, yeah. in the <laughs> county committed to the, doing that. but we got to move there a step at a time, and, and I think, you know, just talking about it more and, and, and making it more of a real reality kind of a plan as opposed to something that's abstract is, is important. So thanks again. Thank Appreciate you, your comments on that. And I, and I know you will support us, you know, doing our first pilot in the village. We definitely want to talk. We, we got to find out what's involved, but yeah, let's talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna, we made a modification to the, to the uh, agenda. We're going to be doing our reports at the end of the agenda tonight. Um, it's tonight only we're doing that. But uh, if there anyone here with a petition for the council, we'll set that now. Any petitions? No petitions? Seeing none, I'm closing the floor to petitions. And now I'll take statements from the public on non-agenda <coughs> items or items on the consent agenda. This is... Diane, this is agenda item three. Okay. So do we have any prior comments from the public? Not on the agenda? Anyone have their hand raised out there, right? All right. So I have no comment card submitted to me for items not on the agenda. If anyone would like to speak, now would be the time. Seeing none. Ma'am? Are you 
you want to speak? I uh, hand bring the card up to the clerk. Yes. That's yeah. I think it's that. That must be item three. Is this what it's for agenda item number three? Okay. All right. When we get to the agenda item, we will give you an opportunity to, to speak. Thank you. All right. So I'm closing the floor to non-agenda items and items on the consent agenda. And with that, Diane, could you give us a consent agenda? Uh, yes, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, number one, approval of the minutes of the council regular meeting of November 17, 2022. Two, approval and authorization in accordance with established policy to make a budget amendment for Fund 303 in the fiscal year 2022-2023 budget. Said amendment to transfer a total of $28,500 from PlayScape Replacement PR2209 to Artificial Turf Safety Surface PR2304. Three, approval and authorization for the village manager to enter into a cost agreement with Main Street at Tuttle Royale LLC for Tuttle Royale development review cost recovery for several development applications affecting the master Tuttle Royale development. Four, approval for the purchase and installation of four electronic display signs from Dactronics Incorporated in the amount of $244,387.71 by piggybacking source well contract number 050819 awarded through request for proposal number 050819 and valid through July 8th, 2023. The signs to be purchased include two double-face displays for Village Hall and Commons Park and two single-face displays to be located at the counterpoint entrance and southern and Royal Palm Beach Boulevard entrance, strategic plan G2MIPL6, uh, P36. Five, approval of a special event permit for the, Palm Beach, for the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office and Palm Beach County Sheriff's Foundation to hold a kickball event for employees. The event will take place on Saturday, January 28, 2023, from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. at the Bob Marcello Baseball Complex. Six, approval and authorization for the village manager to execute consultant services authorization number 19A with the Erdman Anthony to provide engineering services for the Crestwood North Park project number PR2102. The cost for said services shall not exceed $75,602. And seven, approval and authorization for the village manager to enter into a professional services agreement for urban forestry services with Cutler and Herring for various projects in the village of Royal Palm Beach. Okay. Are there any comments or questions from members of the council? If not, I look for a motion. I make a motion to approve consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show the consent agenda was approved 5-0. Moving to the regular agenda, regular agenda item R1 is a public hearing to consider variance application number 2251, an application by Stuart Tully. The applicant is requesting a variance from sections 26-56 and 26-79 to allow for a reduced rear setback of approximately 14.35 feet, where village code requires 20 feet. So the variance request is for 5.65 feet for an existing Tiki hut for a property located at 148 Water Road. Uh, this is a, a quasi-judicial process, so we'll have to square some folks in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir, can you state your name for the record? Uh, Stuart Titley. Can you raise your right hand for me? And Bradford, I'll swear you in at the same time. Do you both swear from to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And I'll turn back to the council for any ex parte disclosures. Just the manager. Staff and a mutual friend. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Bradford, you're up. Great, thank you. I'm just trying to figure out how to escape out of this and then bring my presentation up. Something came up. Yeah, it's just uh, that's not it. I guess you're you're, you're, you're lost on the bus. <laughs> no app. <laughs>
Great. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. As you stated, um, the applicant is requesting a variance from the rear setback um, to allow for a 14.35 setback and a relief of 5.6 feet for an existing gazebo located at um, off of Waterway Road. Um, <coughs> the applicant has provided letters from the properties to the north, properties to the west, and property to the east of his property in support of this variance request. This here is an illustration showing the location of that Tiki Hut. And based on the information provided, uh, village staff does not support the variance request as granted. Granting of the variance would confer special privileges to deny, uh, deny to other residents in similar circumstances. And no special conditions and circumstances are applicable to the subject property. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval by a vote of three to two with Commissioner Leland and McClellan dissenting. And again, staff is recommending denial of this application. And I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Sir, would yes, you Mr. like to Mayor, make some comments? Mr. Mayor, um, Madam Vice Mayor and Council, um, I am here to respectively request a variance from Section 26.57 and 26.79 to allow a 14.35 feet setback where the village code requires 20 feet, a variance of 6.5 feet. For the Tiki Hut that's been on our property for approximately 30 years. 30 years? Yes, sir. Okay. We have approached all adjoining neighbors, importantly the neighbor to the rear, and I have written confirmation from all of them in support of our application. <coughs> We have owned the property at 148 Water Road since 2014. We firmly believe that the Tiki Hut, the Tiki Hut that was on the property, was authorized as it had been in place for many, many years. So, so the Tiki Hut was there when you purchased the property. Yes, sir. Okay. It's, we purchased the, the property in 2014, and it's been there approximately since the mid 90s. <clears throat> We're not expecting any special privilege. Tiki Hut was here when we purchased the house. <coughs> Excuse me. There have been some severe emotional pain throughout this period as a direct result of the fact that the Tiki Hut was always our disabled son's favorite spot in the world. His world was much smaller than ours. And when he passed away five years ago, the family dedicated this Tiki as a memorial to his life. We cannot imagine losing something so important to him and to us in his memory. The Tiki Hut is virtually invisible from anywhere but our patio. And again, it was existing when we bought the house. Please consider our request. When you, when you purchased the property, was there any documentation provided to you as to uh, the, this Tiki Hut being there, how no, it got there? documentation that I have in the sales material that was, that was where we first noticed the property has a video that shows the, the outside patio and it shows the Tiki Hut and it describes the Tiki Hut as a custom built which is accessible on YouTube and that was uh, posted on YouTube in August of 2014. So you've been there for since 2014, you We've said? been there since 14. How did this come up now? <laughs> um, I actually, we have a barbecue next to the fence. Uh -huh. And I decided, in my infinite wisdom, to put up a cover over the barbecue. The, bar the, the cover did not meet code. I got a letter from code enforcement. Okay. I took it down. Okay. So that, that's been remedied. That, yeah. That, that's been remedied, that, that yes. barbecue cover. Okay. Um, do we have any comments, advanced comment cards? No, ma'am. Anyone uh, out there raise their hand? I don't have any, do not have any comment cards submitted to me uh, for this agenda item, but if anyone here would like to comment on it, I will give you that opportunity. Seeing none, I'm closing public comment then to agenda item R1 and open up for comments from my council. Okay. I guess this is 
This is a Bradford question. As far as the process goes, at least my understanding, which could be wrong, is when you purchase a property, there should be an inspection. And isn't that logically where it's supposed to dictate what is allowed and not allowed in your property? Because I know a lot of times we get things that, oh, a contractor came out and did something, never closed the permit. I've seen a bunch of those. Is that, am I right in the process? Is that where it should have been caught? Right. It, well, it worked right. If it worked right, we would have gotten attention to that. Right. A realtor, um, title search, title company group should have identified that structure. Title company should have then looked for permits. Um, that's the way that it typically okay. works. My understanding okay, of how it that's, works. At least I own it. Thank you. But yeah, go ahead. Just, just, I think you you both mentioned this, but the surrounding neighbors uh, have no objections. They submitted documents saying they support this. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay, so there's no harm to there's no harm. They're, they're probably all coming over for the party. I don't know, but they will be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, any other members from council have any comments? If, because my my notion on this is. Um, We've had similar situations, and just because we make a decision for one situation doesn't mean it carries over to another. But from a, um, a common sense perspective, um, I, I don't see any reason why we should deny your request. And that would give council option to discuss. Yeah. No, I don't. I completely understand and agree. Um, I think what we need to do is if there's fixing a loophole, because this is, I think, the third or fourth time that this has come up where somebody said, I purchased it, it was here before. So if there's anything we can do to close that gap so that other homeowners do not end up in this situation, I don't know if there's, we can do. Yeah, uh, it was, I think it's it was a loophole. I think it's, you grab a truck for it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll look into that. And I, I think as part of the strategic planning process, we'll, we'll be looking at gazebos in general and how those are regulated throughout Palm Beach County. We're not involved in the sale. I know. I was going to say that. I mean, that, ever. That's why I, I said mean, you could drive a truck through it. We're not. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, part of the process. Most people get. Most people, banks require a survey when you get a piece of property. Most require a title opinion, and not everybody. Not not everybody requires a, an inspection of the property and a search of our records to identify yeah. if all permits are open or closed. So, that's really up to them if they choose to do that as a buyer, and so. We're not in that loop. And these, these type of structures are built without permits by law. Yeah. So, you know, they're... Because of the source. Correct. Yeah. Which makes it even more challenging. It, it, since, and, and we don't since, do code enforcement but since from you the air. That, so. Since you mentioned permits, I, I always like to share this with our citizens. Do. One of the key reasons for the permit process when you're having things done to your home is to protect you because uh, we... You know, we will look at that and make sure that it's done properly and is done within the confines of the whatever the code requirements are. Yes, but sir. that's really designed to protect you, the customer, in those situations. And when we're not involved, things get built, and here we are tonight, right? Yes, sir. So, anything else? Anybody? If not, then I'll look for a motion. I think a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Regular agenda item R1. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed, sir. Thank you very much. Your request was approved 5 0. Diane, please let the record show. Good luck. Okay, agenda item R2 is a public hearing to consider an application 22 89, an application by Cutler and Herring on behalf of PSN Consulting, Inc. The applicant is requesting a major site plan modification to add 923 square feet addition to expand the existing automobile service station and allow for a larger service base situated within World Plaza and located on 11503 Southern Boulevard. This is a quasi-judicial uh, item and we, some people have to get sworn in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one correction. This, um, we realized on Tuesday night at Planning and Zoning, this should be SPM, uh, comma, AAR. This is also architectural approval, which Bradford will talk about. Okay. And George, when you're ready, I'll swear you in. Can you state your name for the record? George Missimer. You raise your right hand. Do you swear from this all the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And I'll turn back to counsel for ex parte disclosures. 
the, okay. the manager and the applicant. Thank you. You are? Yes. This is in the plaza? Is it in that plaza on the corner of uh, Royal Palm and Southern? Yeah, it's fronting before the bank that the rel renovating. Okay. I think I'm, okay, I'm trying to picture where exactly where it is. Okay. Requirements, landscape areas, and maximum building height. The Planning and Zoning Commission considered recommended approval of this application on December 13th by a vote of 4-0 with Commissioner Leland recusing himself. Again, staff is recommending approval of this application. With that being said, Mayor, I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Who recused himself? Um, Commissioner Leland. Leland. Well, he's involved with this. Yeah. Um, Print it plus. I think he does some um, sign work for them. It's one of his customers. <laughs> Correct. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Good. Would the applicant like to make some comments? Uh, no. For, again, for the record, George Missimer here with Cotler Hearing on behalf of the applicant. Um, I have a presentation. It's basically all the same information that Bradford presented. I give it a little more flair than he does, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, then let's see it. <laughs> huh? Just raise the bar on you. I, I don't have. I don't have a production department. <laughs> Any war suit. Are you satisfied yes. that he adequately presented the project? Yes, he, then, he presented it very accurately. Then you don't feel there's a need to do your presentation. If okay. you don't feel it's necessary, no, sir. Okay, thank you, Diane. We have any advanced comments from the public on no, this? No, ma'am. Ray, anyone out there? Raise your hand. Okay, I have not received any comment cards on this agenda item, but if anyone would like to, now would be the time. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment to agenda item R2 and open it up for comments from members on council. I uh, drive by this location almost every day, uh, heading home from work, and uh, I see it as a, a positive uh, project. In fact, it's a good success story, I think, for the village, someone who's been here for quite a while, and their success is leading to expansion within the village, within all the rules, no variances, no a lot of stuff that are, I, I understand are necessary sometimes, but it's nice to see something, uh, you know, going well in the village and expanding and providing more service to our residents. And uh, if anyone doesn't have any further comments, I move to approve regular agenda item R2. Second. Right. Okay, we have a, <laughs> we have a, um, uh, yeah, we have a motion and a second. Are there any, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I just thought there'd be more discussion. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> right. so the, you caught you off guard. Yeah, you caught me off guard. <laughs> Diane, the 
uh, let the, the record show the motion was approved 4 0. And good luck, sir, as you move forward. Thank With you very flair. Much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Agenda item R3 is a public hearing to consider application number 22 90, an application by Cutler and Herring on behalf of L Car Wash, Royal Palm Beach Limited. The applicant is requesting site plan modification, special exception use for a car wash, self-service or other, and architectural approval to redevelop the site in order to construct and operate a 3,399 3, <coughs> square foot standalone enclosed automated car wash facility for a property situated within a general commercial district zoning district located at 151 South State Road 7. This too is a quasi-judicial uh, process and people have to be sworn in. Guess where Thank I'm you. again? Yes, your name again for the record, sir? George Missimer. Thank you. Raise your right hand. Do you swear from to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Any ex parte disclosures from council on this item? The managers. Thank you. Great, thank you. The applicant is seeking a site plan. Hold on, hold on. I think a few months ago, inadvertently, I, brought, I was in a uh, meeting with one of the folks who wants to do this project. Okay, that's so, disclosed. Thank you. Sorry, but no, very good. Thank you. Uh, the applicant is seeking a site plan modification, special exception use approval for a car wash self service or other, and architectural approval for a 1.36 acre site located at 151 South State Road 7 and situated with Anthony Groves Commercial Plaza. Yeah. The intent of the petition is to redevelop the site in order to construct and operate an approximately 3,399 square foot automated car wash facility. The site is zoned general commercial and a car wash is listed as a special exception use within the general commercial zoning district at section 2689 parens 3. The applicant is also requesting architectural and aesthetic review approval for the buildings and landscape plan. This is an illustration of the site plan. Access to the site will be from an access road to the west of the site, where access is indirectly from State Road 7. The site contains two stacking lanes, and the required bypass lane will be provided. There are also multiple vacuum and cleaning stations along State Road 7. Here is an illustration of the landscape plan, which meets village code. And here is the architectural renderings of the building. In reviewing the proposed special exception, village staff consider compatibility with adjacent land uses, consistency with the village's comprehensive plan and conformance with the village's development standards for the general commercial zoning district, or specifically whether the proposed special exception is consistent with the standards of the village's comprehensive plan, complies with all development and regulations of the village code, does not have adverse environmental impacts, does not have adverse vehicle or pedestrian traffic impacts, does not have an adverse impact upon public facilities, does not have adverse impacts on adjacent properties, compatible with the character and living conditions of the existing neighborhood, um, does not have an adverse impact on property values, um, does not turn to the improvement or development of adjacent properties, Proposed special exception will not seriously reduce the quality or quantity of light and air available to adjacent properties. In reviewing the proposed special exception against village staff considered compatibility with adjacent land uses, consistency with the village's comprehensive plan. Overall, the proposed site plan and special exception meet all of the village's requirements for these types of uses in the general commercial zoning district, and therefore was recommending approval. <laughs> is recommending approval of this application 2290. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission considered the application on December 13 and recommended approval by a vote of five to zero. With that being said, Mayor, I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Okay. Does the applicant choose to make any comments? Uh, I would. Um, again, George Missimer for the record. Uh, and I have been sworn in here tonight on behalf of the applicant. Um, pull up a couple of slides. I don't disagree with any information that staff presented. Um, I would just like to touch on a few points. Uh, again, uh, the location of the site, we are located along State Road 7, um, just south of uh, Southern Boulevard on the uh, west side. Um, it is an existing developed bank site. Uh, it has been a number of different uh, bank businesses over the years. I think the most recent one was Truist. 
uh, all of these uh, banks uh, have gone out of business at this location. They've closed uh, down and sold the property. Um, we are looking to adaptively reuse the site and keeping as much of the existing landscape as possible. So you'll see that uh, we do have well-established perimeter buffer trees providing a valuable canopy. And we have done our absolute best to preserve, uh, I would say, close to 90% of those trees. We are adding a new access point, uh, which is our uh, the only entry point to the property. It's on the north corner, north uh, west corner of the property. So we've pulled the access away from the uh, intersection with Christina Drive so that cars aren't stacking up uh, in that location. Uh, we have situated uh, the tunnel to be facing north-south so that uh, there is no direct line of sight really from really the major angles of the site, the most commonly seen angles, uh, and position the vacuum pumps on the State Road 7 side of the property. Uh, there is a lot of state-of-the-art technology utilized within this facility, uh, again, uh, efficient water use as well as uh, special uh, silenced equipment within the tunnel. So the uh, 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 drying pods within the tunnel have these special silencers to reduce noise and as well the vacuum pumps on the State Road 7 side of the building have uh, virtually no noise whatsoever. We are maintaining uh, pedestrian and ve vehicular access. Um, Just, just a question so it's clear. So you're saying that you, you develop this so that you have your own entrance so you won't be depending on uh, anyone, customers coming in through the traffic circle. I knew that was the question you were, was on your mind. But, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to get right to it, right? So there's, there's two access points to the property, if we go back to it. Oh, so yeah. there's an entry from Christina Drive coming in as well from the north. So there's two points of access uh, as it was with the bank. So um, because of the locations of the adjacent drives, FDOT will not allow us our own dedicated entrance to this site. So um, we're stuck with the entrances that we have and we positioned it further away from Christina Drive to prevent any traffic from backing up. But if I'm reading this right, there is an entrance that is coming directly off of State Road 7. That is an existing entrance. But that's that will be an entrance into your your facility? It, it doesn't. Yeah, it's it's on an it's on an access hey. road on the west side of the property. So State Road Seven is on the east side. So there's no direct access off State Road Seven directly into our property. You go around the su the southern side of the property and turn it. <clears throat> so you're saying they will have to use the traffic circle? No, sir. There there will be oh, there right. will be traffic utilizing the traffic circle. Yep. So both with, from the north and the south. With this traffic pattern that George is mentioning. Christina Drive is the drive that enters into what was what was known as the Enclave, but now right. is Park Air. This is south of this is the south traffic of circle for Victoria. That's what Gross. I thought. That's what I was asking. Right. Yeah. So, okay. There was an opportunity that it would you, it would trend to be the path of least resistance that people would take that route in and try to do the traffic circle because if they tried it once, they won't try it again. I guarantee you that. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, you clarified it for me. Any? Okay, sure. go ahead. Um, I think I think that was essentially all I wanted to add. Again, touching on the points of the sustainability uh, of the project and utilizing as much of the uh, existing native canopy trees as possible, and then those uh, sustainable methods within the car wash system itself. So, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, okay. Well, we'll go to before we take. Any more comments from council? I'll go to public uh, questions. Do we have any advance public Just comments? The two, um, Just the two cards. Yes. Do we have anyone with their hand raised? All right. I do have public comment cards tonight. So uh, we'll start with Donna. Is it Moss? Mace? Okay. Donna Mays, Victoria, uh, 112 Newberry Lane, <laughs> Royal Palm Beach, in the community of Victoria Grove. I'm the HOA president. I'm here to re represent the community. And because we were notified at last minute, we really couldn't gather more people here. But there are a few people here. You had a good, good showing. <laughs> <laughs> we could do better. I know. <laughs> do I need to be, do I really? Okay. Um, 
we obviously oppose the car wash at our at that location. Right now, there are one, two, three, four, five car washes within Royal Palm Beach within 2.7 miles of Victoria Grove Boulevard. You have Motor City on the other side, and now you want to put another car wash over here. Okay. You drive the circle, and that entranceway is now. Oh, let me just back up. Mr. Tuttle is also planning on putting a car wash over at his area also. So, and I have his brochure where he says of what he's listing there, and he has a car wash listed Jesus. over there. So that's right. even. I don't know if that's story. accurate, but that's. Okay, that, but, that but that, yeah. he has, we've been in touch with him. He has mentioned it before, but we right. will, we've already got five other ones within three miles of the community. It's not necessary. Okay, the area is getting built up, our traffic circle is already, we're having so many accidents there as it is because so many people are coming in there. So as you can see, we are definitely opposed to having a car wash. Between the property values, the traffic that are going to be there, you already have a huge motor city right next to us. You have one at, at uh, Walmart, at Belvedere. There's one in the Shell gas station across from the Home Depot. I, I've been here before. I know the words are, it's a necessary object. No, apartments I get are necessary. Car washes with five of them in three point miles of our neighborhood are not a necessary commodity. So I'm sorry to be a little hostile, but it seems that at our end of You're being hostile? I don't at know. At our that. end of this <laughs> our end of the neighborhood, we keep <laughs> no, no. not we're, we're like the stepchild down here. We keep getting passed over and a lot of things are happening and we come here trying, you know, we always try and be a good neighbor. And I bring Bradford, we've met many times. We always try to be a good neighbor. We weren't even approached on this, number one. So, you know, if we were, we would have had a conversation, a nice conversation, stating what our opinions were. And I'm sorry that we have to find out this way that that's what's there. But uh, like I said, we don't have everybody here, but I can speak for 616 homes at Victoria Grove. We are definitely against a car wash being put there. Thank okay. Thank you for your time and have well, a help. Thank you for your, your input. <laughs> no clapping. <laughs> okay, we have Patricia Henry. So I got this. Um, wow, it's a little loud. Excuse me. <laughs> you have a strong voice. I got, this, I got this email at probably about four something. I work in Broward. And I went home thinking that the meeting, because I saw the email and I thought the meeting was at the clubhouse. So I walked to the clubhouse to find out it was Nobody here. there. I ran home, got my purse, jumped in the car because I wanted to be here because I think this is unbelievable. And as, as Donna stated, you know, there's so many car washes around already. There's one already right there in that area. The, air, the roundabout is already dangerous because somehow it was approved that, that, that instead of keeping it a four-way stop sign, to me it would have been, it would have been better <coughs> left alone. They turn it into a roundabout. Most Americans don't know how to drive roundabouts, you know? <laughs> so we get into accidents all the time. No one is yielding. They're stopping as though it's a four-way stop sign already. So I, you know, I digress. The car wash, to me, is an insult to the people that live there, personally, because we've purchased our properties in, with the intent that the property would be able to increase in value, not decreases. If you go south all the way down to Hollywood, you should see how 441 looks very, very blighted. Eventually, this area is going to be as blighted if we allow car washes to come in, and then the, 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 the booty thing down the street on, on Southern Boulevard, the gentleman, gentleman club that they call it ORS, down on, on Southern Boulevard, heading, heading oh, yeah. to uh, 95. We have, and then there's a, there's a juvenile prison. I mean, come on. We, we don't need any more of these things. It's very, it's very bad for our property. Our property is depreciating as a result, you know? So I think it's unfair for the car wash to be put there because it's going to cause a lot of backups, traffic jams, accidents, and it's, it's not good for the value of our property. And we've been here for a while. We appreciate the, royal, you know, the city, the village of Royal Palm Beach, and I've come to uh, several of the meetings, meetings here, but this one I had to make it because I just think that as Donna said, we're treated like stepchild. You know, behind us we have, you know, development behind the, the property. It's just constant right in this area here. And we're asking 
that you please consider not allowing the car wash to be uh, to be paid for. Thank, Thank you for your comments. Okay, um, I, I want to put a couple of things into context up front, and I'm going to ask our attorney. Um, in terms of statutes and laws, my understanding is we we have no ability to determine how what number of types of of, of uh, retail outlets, etc., can can be in play. It's an open market condition. It is an open market, Mayor. If the applicant meets your special exception criteria by evidence at this hearing, uh, as you know, in a quasi-judicial uh, setting, it's um, appropriate to approve the application, even if it's right next door to the exact same use. If it's allowed in your code and they meet the criteria, uh, that that, no that is the decision making. It's not how many you have right. in the village. So That's there's no legal a, standing for us to be able to do that? Not Not... You're correct. Okay. I wanted this to make that clear because a lot of times uh, our citizens, uh, they make an assumption that we have some kind of arbitrary power to do certain things when, in fact, we don't. Um, and that's why I wanted to have my attorney uh, just clarify that for you up front. Um, in full disclosure, I am a resident of Victoria Groves, and I travel through that traffic circle every day. So I'm, I'm d definitely aware of the, the points you raised. Uh, interesting point about traffic circles. We started putting traffic circles in the village, I'm going to say, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. And the first, when we first put them out there, it was incredible. They were running over uh, people's mailboxes. And, and you're right, they didn't really know how to negotiate the traffic circle. It's a frustrating thing, uh, believe me, and I understand it. Hopefully we can do something to educate the drivers a little better on how to do it. But the point of the matter is, um, uh, Victoria Grove is not a stepchild, believe me. I wouldn't be living there if it was. It's not. And I get your concern about what's going on around you. Um, it's not just going on around you. It's, going, it's happening around the entire village of Royal Palm Beach. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about, you mentioned the Tuttle project, but I just want to put in context. The good news is that project is, is, is under our aegis, is the annex into the village. All of that was unincorporated before. Imagine if they have annexed to Wellington. We'd have no control and no say at all over what's going on over there. So let's put it, you know, the, the, the good news portion in, in, into context there. Uh, I understand. I know. That's not, all right, but... We, but no, it, it, and it's not just you being good nervous. It's the, the, the developers being good developers and, and, and engaging you and talking about what they're looking to do and looking at potential issues and seeing what be, it can be done to mitigate those issues. So it's definitely a two-way street, right? So it's not about nobody saying that we're, you're not being good neighbors or something to that effect. So I wanted to put that, that uh, the technical reality from a legal standpoint of what we can and cannot do. Um, whether or not we agree with all the points you raised, as I said, I'm disclosed, I'm a, re a resident there as well. It's not the issue tonight. The issue tonight is um, technically has the requirements been met and we're being told by that they have been met. And the only thing I can clarify, you know, sometimes, and this is not one of those times, but sometimes you'll have certain uses that have distance separation requirements from, from other residents. things yes. or from the right. same type of use. This type of use does not have any type Doesn't of distance that, yeah. separation requirement either. So I, you know, I would also add that. When I first was uh, uh, briefed on this and got information about this project uh, several weeks ago, my initial reaction was similar to yours. Well, how many car washes you know, do we need here in the village? And for some reason, there's a run on car washes. Uh, it, it, I don't know. They must know something we don't know, that people want to get their car washed more. I don't know. But, yeah, I... I you know, but here's the reality. We live in something called the open market scenario. Uh, what private businesses do, if they meet requirements, statutes that we've taken them through, um, they are allowed to make those decisions to open that business. Why they would open another car wash right down the street from another one? I, I, I don't know. That's a business decision can, they made. You want to answer, answer that? I can answer that question. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so at the start of this, uh, obviously as a business owner, and uh, we do have a representative of the business owner here tonight, but there's extensive research done on the market and the comp competition in the area. Um, and part of that 
through our development process, we did do a market analysis using Zabic and Associates to analyze the other car washes in the area. And um, this product that we're bringing is, an, is a self-service car wash, and it's a very nice facility, um, very well maintained. And the other car washes in the immediate vicinity are not self-service. There's a lot of full wash facilities. And so <coughs> it actually is filling a hole in that market. Um, we understand the residents' concerns, um, but again, we are taking a property that has been run down, that hasn't been able to survive based on the use that was developed there, and we're revamping it, uh, revitalizing the landscape, and doing as much as we can to make it a successful project within the village. Okay. Well, any comment from Medical Fund Council? I have a couple of questions. Bradford, can you go back to the map? There you go. Yeah, so they so we're talking about that back access road, the, the western yeah. Where does that go to the north as far as reliever not going to the circle? So this this reliever, so here is Christina Drive um, that we had mentioned. Here you can see the the roundabout emerging at the top of your screen here. So um, this reliever road winds its way back behind um, other businesses along State Road 7 and actually connects to Southern Boulevard. So this was designed as an opportunity for people to get from point A to point B along this corridor without, without ever having to go on to, and that was the purpose, yes. on to State Road 7. And, and how about from the going south? Going south, that goes all the way to the Dunkin' Donuts that you, that you see, um, but it does not connect to the Black Diamond entrance. It stops just north of the Black Diamond entrance. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, one more question. Sure, okay. the, I don't, so we have on the slides National Express Car Wash, but in the documents it's all car. So is it is one a parent company and the other is a subsidiary? How did that? Correct. So, I mean, in those terms, the National Express Car Wash would be the parent company, but L Car Wash is the specific facility that will be in that location. Okay. And so the L Car Wash that is existing that is more full service. Correct. With, with hand this, detailing this, outside. This self car wash is a complement to that. Correct. So this is an automated facility where uh, when someone came, you can get a membership. You come through the pay station. You don't have to exit the vehicle. You go through the tunnel. And then when you get out the other side, you mm -hmm. can access the vacuums, which are free and, on that side. And can you, if, if you've already said it, I apologize. I'm not thinking straight with this cold. But could you talk about um, number of car washes throughout the day on average? Um, Daryl, do you have that number? Can you say your name and also where you in? Your uh, name? Daryl Peterson. Thank you. Do you swear for him to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, the question, I guess, if you could elaborate a little more. Sure. So on an on a average day, how many how many folks are going to get their car wash at a self-service? Um, I mean, it could range from on a rainy day from 10 to 15, 60 daily, um, depending on the week, uh, 150. Uh, on the weekend, Depends. I mean, sure. it's, it's their season. It's sure. Also, if it's a cloudy day, sure. the weather, the weather nature may be one that's going to be different. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say so, if I understand correctly, the primary concern is the additional traffic that will actually wind up going around this, this, this circle. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that um, I guess 
I'm not sure I understand why people would use that entrance to Victoria Grove Boulevard when, when, it, yeah. when in fact you can right just go Center. a little further south. So, <coughs> and I think Jeff, <coughs> yeah, if sure. you're coming from the south, I think you don't. Have, do you have the ability to go across, Christina, to get in there, Bradford? No. Is there a There's no crossover? So if you're coming the from the light. south, you have to go to the left turn at the traffic light. But what I would do, I'd make a U-turn. I wouldn't go through the center. So, I can't hear. But that's, sorry. Oh, but you, you I was know. trying to help Jeff with the yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. question. The reason people would go on to the roundabout is because if you're heading from the south and you're going north, you cannot make a left into there. You're gonna if you're if you're going northbound and you want to go to that car sure. wash, you're gonna have to go up and make a left at the light and then come back down so, south. Well, what I'm telling you, I just believe come me. back down on State Road Seven. But people or a, do. or a U-turn. Yeah, or a U-turn or go further north. Once they figure out the together. first time they go there, they might do that. They'll say next time I'll just so. make a U-turn and come by the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, you got your hand up. What is it? It won't be. No, no, no. So, That's, so yeah. let, let me. You say the same thing I'm saying, by the way, but okay. Right. <laughs> so Okay. All right. All right. I understand. So what I was going to right. share was simply my experience. So I used to use, uh, what is it, city city car wash? The, the, old, Motor the city older car one, right? City. Say it again? Motor, Motor city car wash. Motor city car wash, exactly. And you know what? If I could have turned straight in there instead of going this way, around the circle, another right, another left, I, I know exactly where that is. Boy, I would have used a more direct route in. I don't want to have to be winding around and dealing with all the traffic that is normal in around that circle. I'd stay on State Road 7. So I would hope, and I don't know how you could possibly predict this accurately, that you're not going to get the full 350 cars on a weekend. You're not going to get anything even close to that because, again, my experience, I would have used any kind of direct access to that car wash other than having to go through that serpentine in order to get there. It just, so hopefully that experience is, is going to be what will prevail here. And you're not going to see as much traffic as you would have. I, and I understand that. We, we're not trying to make it difficult or even accepting a difficult situation like that if there's a way around it. The fact that there's a direct access makes me feel a little less concerned than, um, than what I would otherwise, so. Is yeah, debating this continuing no. is it is what it is, and we're just trying to put it to we're trying to I'm trying to get you to put it to a different context, all right? But, but that's not the point. The point is is it, that's not gonna that those are we're not talking about something that says oh because of that there's a different action that we can take, all right? I tried to lay that out for you up front what the realities were, what limitations we had on what we what actions we can and cannot take. So I just want I don't want us to lose sight of that, all right? Um, there's nothing I'm, we're going to say here tonight that's going to make you walk away and feel good about this, yeah. obviously. But I just want to put it into the reality context. And by the way, you know, when people make statements, you make statements like, oh, this is going to hurt my property values. That's a very myopic way to view. This, this is not going to hurt our property values. All right? Rich was going to say something. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rich. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess first is a, is a Bradford question. From the way I read the application, the, uh, what, the stacking and the parking and the traffic were consistent with what is required by the village correct yes sir and, and i'm going to throw this in there too so just to give you a configuration of how you're going south on state road seven you have the car wash then you have um, christina drive 
Then you have those inline stores with the Jimmy John's. Between that and the rooms to go, there's an opportunity if you're traveling north on State Road 7 Coming to also there. take a left into there so. and simply go north by passing and crossing Christina Drive. So there's three options there to not have to use the roundabout, the U-turn, and then entering. Okay, and I guess I, it's probably another um, Bradford question because I, I didn't see it in there because this is previously a bank. Right. And this isn't going to be like the Motor City Car Wash where they have people there that it's open and closes. Are there hour limitations? Are you going to have people there at 3 o'clock in the morning doing their own car? Or is there any restriction on that? There, there is no restriction of hours of operation. But if it does in our code, if there is, there are noise ordinances within our code which limit noise. If it becomes a nuisance, it can always be brought back to council. And this is stated in our code where you can set hours of operation limitations on this on this site okay and to the people from victoria groves i mean honestly i'm looking at this and i don't know if you were there don or you remember the uh the racetrack on southern boulevard years ago that uh you know that's right down the street from my house and i didn't want the more traffic and i didn't want it to uh be there you know, in hindsight, maybe I was wrong, but the, I'm representing the people where I lived, and the people didn't want it. Um, but unfortunately, they crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's, and I had to vote for it. And that's uh, what I'm seeing here. I definitely feel your pain because I don't, I don't want that traffic, and, and no one wants that uh, in their neighborhood. But I, I don't see, unfortunately, a way. I could justify denying, but uh, that's, I, I, I just spoke with the applicant. They're, they plan on closing uh, their operation at nine, and he would be willing to accept a condition of approval as part okay. of a special exception to close the operation at nine o'clock. And I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, employee closing, having to sweep up. Nine o'clock. I'm I'm really letting being liberal with letting you talk. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so it's traffic education. All right. 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 Okay. Uh, right. Folks, this is not an open conversation. That this lady here, you keep raising your hand. What is it, man? Where? Is it still a stop? Because they they're, they're moving their stops. Well, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. But that. But that doesn't give us the ability to change this. But we we should we should let the school board know that may want to look at that at that location, which they have been doing, all right, but for safety. Because of well, yes, it's the school bus. We got a couple of stops over there with the school buses, but that's, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. I want to move along here because I don't want us to get bogged down. Any other comments from everyone on council? Um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to hear your, your concerns, and I hope you understand the realities that we've tried to explain to you this evening on where this is going to go and why it's going that way. And Bradford, anything else you need to add? No, sir. All right. So. If we want to, if, if we want to create a condition of approval, it has to be part of the motion. That's correct, Mayor. Um, and the, and the condition needs to be reasonably related to the application and proportional and in, in in effect to to the application as well. So, but would so how do we do that? Yeah. Well, the motion would be to approve the application with the following condition okay. of approval, and okay. then articulate whatever condition of approval. Okay. Is that the only condition that we're looking at? Yes, sir. 
any other questions from council? Which, which is that the car wash would not operate later than nine o'clock in the evening? Yes, um, closing the car wash operation at nine o'clock um, with maybe the employees 10 o'clock. <laughs> And the applicant has uh, agreed to that condition uh, on the record. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. On the record. Okay. Uh, Mary, do you want to add something? No, no. no. That's fine. Okay. All right. Well, with that said, then I guess I'll look for a motion. I'll make a motion uh, to approve uh, regular agenda item number three with the condition that the car wash operate um, or close at 9 p.m., not later than 9 p.m., uh, and allowing another hour for employees to depart. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I know you're opposed. Yes. <laughs> we, have, we have no opposed. But thanks. You too. Sorry you couldn't give you a better outcome. But I, I, and I understand that too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Diane, please let the record show that agenda item R3 was approved uh, for zero. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Agenda item R4 is a public hearing to consider application number 22-96, an application by Urban Design Studios in adoption of ordinance number 1032. The applicant is seeking a change of land use designation for 10 tracts of land totaling approximately 31.846 acres. More for the village's commercial land use designation to the village's mixed use social center land use designation, and for five tracts of land totaling approximately 9.289 acres uh, from Palm Beach County LR2 low residential land use designation to the village's mixed use social center land use designation located on the south side of Southern Boulevard approximately seven tenths of a mile west of State Road 7. I guess since we now put that new ordinance in place now we gotta adopt they want to adopt themselves to the to use it. That's what this is. Correct. And and this is second reading I believe. It uh, is, yes. And, uh, okay I, now it doesn't say second it. reading. No, it doesn't say that. Okay. Just, I'm looking at the ordinance in the back up it looked like it first is. reading was in November. Is that correct? It is. And Mr. Mayor if I could read the ordinance by title. Please do. Thank you. It's ordinance number ten thirty two an ordinance of the village council of the village of Royal Palm Beach, Florida adopting an amendment to its comprehensive development plan in accordance with the mandate set forth in section 163.3187 at SEC, Florida statutes pursuant to a privately initiated application number 22-97 SCPA, which provides for an amendment to the village future land use map designation 41.135 plus or minus acres, more or less, of real property as mixed use social center, which property is located on the south side of Southern Boulevard and approximately 0 0.27 miles west of State Road 7, US 441, informally known as Southern Boulevard Properties Pod 6, further providing for transmittal to the state lead print State Land Planning Agency providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, providing an effective date, and for other purposes. Rapid draw. Great. Great. Mayor, um, I won't repeat your introduction. Uh, the Village Council on September 18, 2022, adopted Ordinance 1028 in order to amend the village's comprehensive plans future land use element to add entirely new mixed use social center land use designation. The intent of the amendment was to create a future land use designation that allows for innovative and urban mixed use developments that provide integrated, vibrant, compatible, and complementary uses within a single development. <coughs> Staff generally agrees with the applicant that, the overall, that overall the proposed future land use Amendment from Palm Beach County's low residential and the Village of Rural Palm Beach's commercial land use designation is consistent with the Village's comprehensive plan, compatible with adjacent future land uses and meets all relevant concurrency level of service standards. Finally, the proposed land use amendment package consistent with the requirements of Chapter 163 of Florida Statute concerning the requirements for processing of future land use amendments and therefore is recommending approval of, that, of this application. The Village Council considered this ordinance on first reading on November 17th local planning agency considered this application on December 13 and recommended approval by a vote of five to zero. Again, staff is recommending an approval. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mary. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, does the applicant want to make any comments? 
are you satisfied with the presentation if I, that was made? Okay. Uh, do we have any Sufficient public comments prior? No, Mayor. <laughs> Anyone with their hand raised? Yes. I, I, said, I just said, I guess I had a sufficient amount of flair yes. in that presentation. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> that really got it. <laughs> okay, no. Mr. Flair. No, uh, no, no uh, hand raise. I have no public comments received, uh, comment cards received this evening. Anyone like to comment? No, I see none. I'm closing public comment to agenda item R4. Uh, open comments for members on council. If there are no comments, I look for a motion. Make a motion to approve regular agenda item number four. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? If you have no opposed, Diane, please let the record show the agenda item R4 was approved 4 0. Agenda item R5 is the public hearing for a second reading and adoption of application number 22 18. An adoption of ordinance number 1027, an application by Urban Design Studio, amending village code to amend section 26 22 definitions in order to revise certain definitions and to add entirely new definitions, <laughs> an entirely new section 26-95, MXX mixed use social district, to create an entirely new uh, mixed use social district, zoning district, and provide land and development regulations for the new district, create an entirely new section 20-63, mixed use so uh, social district, the social center. To establish sign regulations for the new MXS zoning district and amend section 22-55, recreation of requirements, recreation requirements for residential developments to add recreational requirements for mixed use social center developments. <laughs> Who wrote this? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I have a question though. Shouldn't we have done this first before the item before? No? No, this is zoning. Okay. It's okay. It's, it's sure. All right. With that, uh, this is a quasi-judicial process. This one is. To get sworn in. Uh, Lency, if I could swear you in on this one. Thank you. Could you come to the microphone and state your name for the record? And Brian, also sorry. Thank you. Lency Jean-Louis. Brian Tuttle. You both swear firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank yes. you. And I'll ask the council for ex parte disclosures. Just the mayor, Mr. Our Mr. manager. Thank you, and Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry you, you uh, virtually read that by title, but I'll just add that this is second reading and the revision that the council requested uh, via condition at the last meeting, the uh, palm tree replacement to royal palm tree replacement is reflected in the new ordinance. Uh, that's on your backup on page 19. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so if you remember at the last uh, when this was approved on the first reading, I went through the sections of the code that we were adding and the subsections that we were adding and going into great detail as to what those um, meant. I'm just gonna highlight the sections and the subsections without that great detail um, tonight. Um, the applicant <laughs> is requesting a zoning text amendment to the village zoning code to add entirely new mixed use social center zoning district and supporting regulations to village code. The village council on September 18, 2022 adopted ordinance 1028 in order to amend the village's comprehensive plan future land use element to add an entirely new mixed use social center land use designation. The intent of the amendment was to create a future land use designation that again allows for innovative and urban mixed use developments that provide integrated, vibrant, compatible, and complementary uses within a single development. The proposed zoning text amendment will establish the zoning regulations which will control the form in which a development will build out within this district in order to achieve the mixed use social center land use designations intent. Um, the zoning requirements, village code section 2695 was added to create this district. Section 2695 was laying out the permitted and the special exception uses. Um, we added site development standards, uh, required building frontage styles, storefront style, arcade style, and the general style. Maximum building height. Don't try to follow along. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm at. Um, maximum building height, minimum yard setbacks, 
minimum open space requirements, maximum floor area, maintenance of common facilities, minimum recreation requirements, minimum size, landscape standards, special regulations, off-street parking and loading, parking garages, bike parking, <coughs> transit, pedestrian crossings, common architectural themes, hours of operation, special events and outdoor uses, minor events, major events, art and public places, and approval criteria and a maximum density, amending section 2622 definitions, creating new definitions for a build to zone, establishing recreation structures, retail sales, MXS, what does that mean, rooftop amenities, and transparency. Um, the recreation requirements um, was also amended to um, state that to require the private recreation amenities shall not be open to the public and restricted to those for the private use. And the Village Council approved this application at uh, first reading by a vote of five to zero. And the local planning agency approved this um, zoning text amendment by a five to zero. Staff is recommending approval. And I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mayor. Thank you. Does the applicant choose to make any comments? Uh, the only thing I'd like to mention is this, is that um, we have now gotten meaty into the actual site plan approval. And the outside the consultants have made comments. And on the first round, there was 300. And it's, it's, um, it's very intense, but very good. I mean, I'm really pleased with the process. Very, very pleased with it. Because the <coughs> outside consultants have come in and put a fresh look on the whole project. And, um, you know, they're doing a lot of cross your T's and dot your I's, but they're also throwing out a lot of ideas that we didn't think about. So I just want to be clear that when we do bring the site plan, hopefully by February, March at the latest, there's going to be a lot of variances. I just want to be real clear. There's going to be a lot of variances, half of which are going to be recommended to us by the outside consultants because they're ideas we just didn't think about. But once you hear them, I think you'll love them. Uh, and, and <laughs> for example, in the parking lots, they have trees every 15 feet. But if you put two oak trees 15 feet apart, they, they end up killing each other. So they want to go with one bigger tree that would provide more shade, stuff like that. And um, there's just a lot of really, really good ideas on the <laughs> side. So I just wanted to, to mention that, that they're throwing out some really cool ideas. And, so, and, and we're really excited. So it's, it's all really good, but there will be some variances to make it perfect. Thank you. So let me get this straight. So we're, we just put on the books a new <laughs> ordinance. And <laughs> right out, wrote. huh? That he wrote. That he helped write. Wrote. Yeah, they had, we had a lot of input. And right out of the box, oh, but we need variances. All right, we'll see how it works out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Diane, do we have any no, prior? No? <laughs> right, anyone got their hand raised? A lot of hands probably went up now, right? <laughs> no? Okay. I don't have any comment cards submitted on agenda item R5, but if anyone would like to comment further? Okay, seeing none, I'm closing public comment to agenda item R5 and look for comments from the uh, council. This is second reading. If there are no comments, I look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve regular agenda item number five. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that agenda item R5 uh, was approved on a second reading 4 0. Thank you. Agenda item R6 is a public hearing for the first reading of ordinance number 1034, approval of application number 22 124, an application by Urban Design Studios. The applicant is seeking a rezoning of 10 tracts of land totaling approximately 31.846 acres from the village's general commercial zoning district to the village's mixed use social center zoning district and for five tracts of land totaling approximately 9.289 acres 
from Palm Beach County's Architectural Res Residential Zoning District to the Village Mixed Youth Social Center Zoning District. And located on the south side of Southern Boulevard, approximately seven tenths of a mile west of State Road 7. This is two of quasi judicial process. You have to swear on them again? They've been sworn this is the same master project. I'll just ask for council ex parte uh, disclosures. Ma'am, yeah. thank you. I probably talked to the applicant. Okay, thank you. I don't know. Great. Um, the applicant is seeking to rezone 10 tracks totaling approximately 31.846 acres of land from the village's general commercial zoning district to the village's mixed use social center zoning district and for five tracts of land totaling 9.289 9 acres from Palm Beach County's agricultural residential zoning district to the village's mixed use social center zoning district located on the south side of Southern Boulevard approximately 0.27 miles south of Southern. The village council on November 17th approved on first reading and on second reading tonight ordinance number 1027 which amended the village's zoning code to add an entirely new mixed use social center zoning district in reviewing the proposed zoning of the parcels to the village's mixed use social center zoning district village staff considered compatibility with adjacent land uses consistency with the village's comprehensive plan and conformance with the mixed use social center development standards on section 2695 more specifically, the request is consistent with and meets the county's traffic performance standards with conditions and proportionate share payments for the construction and whitening of certain roadways. And level of service standards for sanitary sewer, solid waste, drainage, potable water, recreation, and school with a monetary contribution. The Village Council did consider Ordinance 1032 on first reading on November 17th, recommended approval by a vote of five to, I'm sorry, scratch that. Um, the local planning agency considered this application on December 13th and recommended approval by a vote of five to zero and staff has recommended approval of this rezoning and I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Does the applicant choose to make any comments? No? No? Nope. Okay, you're satisfied with the comments made by staff? Okay. <laughs> In the flare. <laughs> it was a good flare. Okay. Uh, Diane, any prior comments? No? <coughs> Ray, anyone with their hands raised? No, Mayor. Okay, I have not received any comment cards this evening uh, on agenda item R6, so I'm going to close public comment on that item. And if there are any comments or questions from staff, we'll take those now. And if none, I'll look for a motion. Okay. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve regular agenda in R6. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show agenda item R6 was approved 4 0. Yes. Agenda item R7 is adoption of resolution number 22 42, 22 43, and 22 44, approval of application number 22 138. Granting a request from Urban Design Studios on behalf of Total Royale. Southern Boulevard Villas and EDX Royal Property LLC for a six month extension to development approvals for pods three, four, and seven to March 2nd, 2023. For part three, the extension request is for the site plan, architectural and, uh, and aesthetic and variance approvals. Ah, that's why I told us it was variance this time. The part four, the extension request is for the site plan, special exception, landscape, waiver, and variance approvals. For part seven, the extension request is for the site plan and architectural and aesthetic and special exception approvals for properties located on the south side of Southern Boulevard, approximately 2.7 miles west of State Road 7. Okay. These are not quasi judicial, so Brad, if you are. Great. Um, I can repeat exactly what you just said, you or to. I can just show you which, on the master plan, which pods we're speaking of. We're speaking of pods three, four, and seven. This is multifamily, this is zero lot line, and this is the charter school pod. And with that being said, Mayor, we are recommending an approval of this application, and I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Okay. The applicant choose to make any comments? Do enough flair again. Oh, okay. Um, Diane, 
Do we have any prior yeah. requests? Okay, any hand signs? No, Mayor. Okay, also I have not received any comment cards on agenda item R7 this evening, so I'm closing public comment on agenda item. And look for comments from council. If there are no comments, I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve regular agenda item R7. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane Sue Bethel Becker Show. Agenda item R7 was approved 4 0. Yes, Mayor. Agenda item R8 is a public hearing to consider application number 22 54, an application by Mario Lopez Pisani, I think is the pronunciation, on behalf of the village of Royal Palm Beach. The applicant is seeking architectural approval for acquisition and commercial of public art photographs for the cultural center located at 11151 Civic Center. Where were you? You, you were, were, I you, was, were you hiding? <laughs> <laughs> in the darkness over there. Okay, you're on, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is, uh, I bet, uh, the first public art presentation, so it's exciting for me. Um, happy to be here with you guys. It's, so, a, it's our first, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the village, all of them. Uh, so, just to get straight to it, um, this is a presentation for the Cultural Center, public art for the Cultural Center. Um, it started. This is a table of contents. Um, it just shows uh, what we'll be talking about tonight. Um, issue location, artist selection, artist selection criteria, some renderings, and recommended action by um, planning staff. So the public art requirement for the cultural center. Um, the cultural center at the village of Royal Palm Beach needs public art to satisfy section 26-75.5 Art in Public Places Order. The ordinance came into effect after the, after the cultural center underwent expansion and improvements in 2019 with vertical construction costs $2,467,723, some change. These improvements provide funding for the acquisition of public art for the center. The village has allocated $30,000 in budget for public art, which satisfies the village code requirement of 1% of vertical construction costs. Currently, the center does not exhibit any work at all. <laughs> this is uh, just a map showing the location of uh, the cultural center, as you can see between Royal Palm Beach and Okeechobee, on uh, Civic Center way there. And this is uh, to get into the artist, the artist selection. To fulfill the public art requirement, we have proposed New York-based photographer Sean Padron for a photography commission in the village, as well as purchase of selected works from his time-lapse series. Mr. Padron was selected as his work can capture many of the themes the village promotes, such as creating an aesthetically pleasing, active, and connected community. By selecting Padron, the village aims to create an original art commission unique to the community from a leading photographer in the art world. Padron's captivating compositions can highlight the striking backgrounds where he shoots and show the diversity of individuals within the community. For this particular reason, we aim to highlight Royal Palm Beach by creating work in the village that speaks to the dignity and beauty inherent to this place we call home. Here is a pursuant to section 26-75.5G. Uh, this is basically the artist selection criteria. This is the criteria that was in, um, this is what we use under consideration to select this artist. So basically, the aesthetic and technical quality and originality of the artist's previous work uh, as evidenced by photos and other supporting material, the artist's previous experience with public art projects of a similar scale scope, the artist's demonstrated ability to execute and complete a project, the artist's ability to communicate ideas verbally and visually, or work effectively in a team environment, and the appropriateness of the artist's proposal to the particular project and the probability of successful completion. This next slide is uh, the artist himself. So there's an image there of Sean Padron. Uh, Sean Padron is a cultural observer his photographic eye helps him create works of art that are like sociological experiments, merging the lines between identity, community, and geography. This technique is straightforward, while its conceptual framework can be deeply profound. The photographer begins his process by finding an appropriate location to set up his camera. Then he observes communities with the keen eye of a fine artist. Once he settles on a location, he captures community members at random, strolling past backdrops he's ultimately chosen. This repetitive activity of capturing passerby in the community is the anchor of Sean Padron's work. 
the inner life of the community is captured through individuals stitched together to form a whole, showing various members of a community within the same composition. These ideas carry a beautiful aesthetic resonance, but also they speak to the meaning of community. As we live individually, a sense of social connection and sense of belonging is important to build a strong bond with our neighbors. This is sort of a, um, my reading of the photographer and why he's so appropriate for the uh, village. Uh, and the following slides are going to be examples of this work. This is a piece uh, by Sean Padron from his time lapse series. And this is in Auckland, New Zealand, created in 2017. As you can see, uh, he's chosen the same backdrop. Uh, and he stays there for an extended amount of time, shooting the different passerby within the community. And sort of all the different individuals create this beautiful hodgepodge of uh, members of the community in one composition. This next slide is uh, another piece from his time lapse series. This one created in Venice, California, 2019. <coughs> so the following slides will be digital renderings of the proposed locations for the works that we want to purchase and commission. This is a piece that we want to purchase from his collection, which exists at this moment, uh, it's called We the People, uh, and it's very much in a uh, way of his aesthetic, which is people with a backdrop that just so happens to create the American flag. So, so the people, that picture of the people is where the stars normally go? Yep. Okay. Also people in the yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, can't I see don't know it. if you can see, All well, right. it may not be. No. Yeah. yeah, so th this was, yeah. this, I guess this image is more so you can get a, an idea of the location and how it'll be hanging on the wall and, and sort of a dimensional uh, a place. Bless you. This is another piece, and this piece was actually created in West Palm Beach. Um, this is another piece we want to purchase. Wait a minute, that's West Palm Beach? That was created here in West Palm, so that's from No, we, we don't want any West Palm Beach. No. <laughs> we have three pieces. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't want West Palm Beach. No, it's... Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and this next image uh, is basically more so uh, a sample. This is the biggest wall that we have in the cultural center, and this is the piece where we want to commission. So the commission piece will be the largest piece in the three uh, total pieces. When you say commission, with that, does that mean he's going to go out and take new pictures? He's going to come. He's, he's going to do this in work. Royal Palm. He's, so that's the idea. So he works. He has a studio in New York. He's going to fly down. He's going to uh, be here perhaps from one of our events, and he's going to take pictures in the village. So he'll create work in Royal Palm Beach. So we'll have Royal Palm people in the picture. Exactly. That's the idea. So but, what, but you just said <laughs> only one piece is commissioned. Only one piece is commissioned, yeah. But the, the other, other ones pieces, are as is. Huh? They already exist. The other, so other two pieces already exist. Yeah, so we're basically and purchasing I'm, two from his inventory. I'm, and then one I'm really I'm serious. I, yeah, I'm not. I don't think having West Palm people in our. Okay. So we I, can. I mean, this. Not not really something I think we want to do. Okay. We I agree. I mean, you. we agree. Yes. Yeah, I think we agree on that. Yeah. He has an inventory, so we have. You know, there's other pictures to choose from. All right. Or we can I suggest or Philadelphia we can people. Two, two. Or we can commission two, we and he need. can check on the price on, on doing yeah. two commissioned. And we one. could afford that, yeah. Well, within the budget, I mean. 30 is in the budget. Okay. And we can purchase two and commission one for 30. So yeah. whether what it would cost to commission two, and that's it, or what it would. I would have to talk to the artist. At the moment, but, we're commissioning one, so that's cost well, of well, let me travel, ask this question. stay. What would it cost to commission to have Royal Palm people in all three of these. So we have our, the, the, the American flag one with Royal Palm people and the other ones, all Royal Palm people. I would have to get back to you with that. Try I'd that. have to okay. talk to the, it would, it, I don't think it would cost the same as just one. I think maybe I could work with them. Find out what it is and okay. see what we could work out, you know, to okay. get a, be a competitor as we can be. But I, I, if, are we kind of in agreement that we want, if we're going to put up People, we want our own 
folks up there. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I guess part of it for me is, I it'd be great to have Royal Palm Beach people, but if it's going to cost ninety thousand instead of thirty, right. I'm not looking for the Royal well, Palm Beach people <laughs> for everything. I just uh, well, the, I mean, the well that tells is, you it can't be three times the number, but all right. exactly. The, the good news is if we're going to commission it, number it's one travel more. trip. Right. We don't need to bring him down three times. That, so that was basically the the plan was. It's also um, he creates this work in large cities. So what he, what we want to do is get him here maybe for an event so that he can capture as many people. But yeah. if we get him for other you know images, we have he'd 40, have to work on the selection of a different background, and so he'd have to be here probably for longer to get to know the village and well, get an idea you know what. Okay. That, that that's basically why I commissioned one piece and then purchased two. Now I think we can. I like the idea of tying the, the images together. Right? You have one from Royal Palm. You have another showing the flag. You have another showing another city. It doesn't have to. We don't want to show Palm. another city. Let's be clear with that. Okay. Okay. I'd like to. We maybe. want Royal Palm people. If we're spending Royal Palm dollars. Okay. Well, okay. And and maybe. I like the flag. I mean, personally, I like that the flag was the, too. That was the one that jumped out like, at me. It was. I like the I just concept. like the flag. That's, That's the, the only. Oh. And and why couldn't we theme the flag around a veteran event or Memorial Day or yeah? So okay. So, okay. So All right. uh, yeah. keeping that thought, these events yeah. are great opportunities to do something like this. It yeah. Seems to me, and to yeah. tailor it to Royal Palm Beach in particular. I, yeah. Yeah. It, it would get afforded. It's yeah. It opens the possibilities for the many more things. Great. We love the concept. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. And so that's, I mean, so the last of our slide, it's a recommended action, uh, and I can read it through. The applicant is requesting architectural approval for the acquisition of art to fulfill the public art requirement for the cultural center located at 151 Civic Center Way. The proposed public art will be created by artist Sean Padron. The artist was selected, again, as his work can capture many of the themes the village promotes, such as creating an aesthetically pleasing, active, and connected community. This public art acquisition refers to one original commission unique to the community, and two works of art from the artist's inventory. Staff is recommending approval of application number 22-154 AAR as submitted. <laughs> well, I as guess this moment. We have, we're not approving that, so. Okay. How long do you think it'll be before you can get back to us? Uh, I, can, uh, I can try and contact him tomorrow, but he's a sort of a... Well, wait a minute. I can, the, the, the direction I was going to take was we're spending $30,000 and we're going to buy art for the cultural center. If that's one commission piece of work, that then then that's what it is. If it what we had was one commission piece of work and two ba and and two purchased off the shelf. Um, if I mean we we can we can get this artist for less than thirty thousand for thirty thousand dollars or less commission a piece of work. If we can get another piece in there. As part of that, and keep it under thirty, that we'll do. If we can't, we just won't do another piece. Well, right? And and what you're saying is, don't buy anything off the shelf, and we'll do that. Right. Anything out there. Now, I don't know if he would take something that he previously did and copy it with Royal Palm Beach people. I don't know if he would be willing well, to his, do that. That's my, that's a that, the reason why I don't want to say that. he could do this or that is because we had already worked out a sort of a, an artist agreement. So I don't want to change the artist agreement and say, hey. Oh. You, but, you're, but they're saying we have to change the artist agreement. Now, sure. We, we yeah. had to do but that I, to come yeah. the way the ordinances read. We had to have a worked out agreement right. before we got here. For, yeah. So now you're asking for a different worked out agreement. I got the criteria of it. That is commissioned work, less than $30,000 with Royal Palm Beach people, and we'll try to bring back the best we can. And, Mr. Mayor, what I may suggest is your, your code requires two public hearings, one before planning and zoning, which happened on Tuesday night, and then your, your public hearing tonight. It may be appropriate tonight to motion to table this to your next regular meeting. That way, the revisions can be made and well, be brought back to PNZ. I don't have a problem with us tabling it, but that's why I asked him what, is, what how, how much time he needed to be ready to get back to us. Like I said, I can contact him tomorrow in the morning. The only the only reason I can't give you a definitive answer is because he's a photographer that travels. He's often traveling for work, so I, I perhaps just, a month. If you're saying you could no. be ready to come back to us at the next council meeting, then we can table this. And get the update from you at the next the next meeting. Yeah, that works. I mean, I, you were proposing you something try. else, though, right? You were proposing well, that we do a, a well, we, an amended version of this. Well, the one the one commission piece of work is the most important piece of work with the Royal Palm people, and that was the green one. 
And I think you can improve that tonight. If we can get another piece with another background within the 30, if, if say under the 30 grand, then I, then we can move. I think, I think you've given us enough direction to move forward with it. I just don't think it can be the flag background because these, each one of these are original piece of work. And I don't think that, I'm not sure that he would do that. And if we were to do the, the green background piece, that is the largest piece. So in that's, so that's why I said it was a sample, right? Like, um, when he gets here and she chooses a location and he creates a piece, it could look similar to that, but it'll be a commission. So it's a, it's own unique one. It may not, it won't, it may not be a green background. Okay. You get okay. what I'm saying? It's a, it's a unique piece. So, so where it's I was not going, created yet. Right. Where I was going is we can take a significant step forward here by having a large piece on a large wall in the cultural center. Exactly. Commission, even though it's not going to look like that in all likelihood, it will be Royal Palm Beach unique. Yes. And it'll yeah. be our first piece. Yes. Yeah. Which so is a, I, if a I can, milestone, right? It's, if I can say something, I think the point of contention is the West Palm piece. What yeah, I can talk. Point of contention is we want raw palm people if we're going to show people. Right. End of story. The only thing, we can we can try to trade out that piece, and tell him, hey, can you commission a piece a similar size for this? So basically, commission two pieces, or when he's in this commission here, create two pieces from the same time he's here. I can talk to him about that, and we keep the flag. Something. But something like that. Yeah, I just. I, it seems like. Uh, the way I'm interpreting things, I'm in the minority, but I don't have any problem with the flag, and I'd like to have the flag thing. Whether I, it's Royal no, Palm Beach or if we can't have the flag with Royal Palm Beach people, I'd rather still have the flag as it is, was shown. I'll tell you what. The, let's take that into consideration based on price points, because I was going to ask, how much is Thank the you. one piece that we're commissioning? Yeah, how much is that? It's $30,000 for the three, right? right? Or do you have them broken down? What's the breakdown? You have them broken down, but I have them. Oh, okay. My, my other thought is, if we approve to take one piece now, we are taking away our leverage. Well, he'll, he'll, he can, he'll be able to talk to him, and we'll be able to report back to the council, the okay. next council meeting. So the commission would be close to $11,000. We could do that. That doesn't meet our 1% public art requirement. No, no. The, co the cost of the one commissioned one is 11000 11000 yeah, for that so one. That, for that, that leaves us $19,000. We and can spend any other two commission. And he wouldn't charge the same thing for the other two. I mean, we're not going to pay for travel twice, one, three one, times. One trip. Well, yeah, so. We'll get one. We understand the criteria. Okay. okay. What do you need? A, we really like the flag. We really like Royal like Palm people. Flag. Yeah. And we want, <laughs> we want original pieces. Okay. <laughs> you, you got yeah. it. Now, what do we do? Yeah, how do we we're do this? We're going to bring, we're going to table it and I, bring it back to you next time. We're going to just table it? Yes. Okay. Okay, man. Yeah. Diane, please show that was right. tabled. Already? Okay, so this was our first shot down this path. So this is this is good. But good you know stuff. it's a learning process yes. and yes. we've got to get our bearings. Do we need a motion, Keith? Sir, I was gonna say we need yeah, we, uh, we need a motion I, to ask for a motion to two. I look for a motion to table until I'll make a motion next, to table. Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed. Diane, please let the motion to table uh, motion was approved for zero. Okay. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Great, great good. work. Good, yeah. good start. Thank you, you very much. You know how long I've been waiting to see some art on those walls? Hey, I'm trying. From day one <laughs> when, we, when we open. No, no. Thank you, though. But oh, it's good. This, this is a learning process for all of us. So. Hey, Fred, you know there are pictures of the mayor and council on those walls. No, I'm not talking about that wall. I'm talking about the <laughs> That's not wall. art? <laughs> That's definitely not art. No. Thank it's Royal Palm, though. Yeah, definitely that. Royal Palm uh, people. I have the ball. All right. I've, I've been called a lot of things, but never are. Never are. Yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> okay. Agenda item R9 is appointment of resident to the Education Advisory Board. Since the council, uh, uh, council liaison for that is not here. Yeah. Oh, no, it is oh, here. I'm, I'm here. thinking it's something. I'm wrong board. Unless, unless you know You're something. Here. I don't know. No, I don't know oh, anything. Okay. Believe me. All right. That's fine. So we do have, we do have two openings, and, um, and we have one applicant right now that um, uh, is... Uh, Aaron Franklin, who happens to be uh, not only a, uh, a, a registered nurse, uh, but she also has uh, at least two kids at H.L. Uh, Johnson Elementary School, which qualifies her for that position. So 
Um, I would like to make a motion to appoint Aaron Franklin to a regular seat expiring March 2023. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed? Sam Susan, let the record show that the appointments were approved for zero. Anything else? Support. Okay. We agreed at the beginning of the meeting that we would postpone oh, oh, yeah, our reports to, to the end. I'm going to ask if you'd rather wait to our next meeting to do our, your reports. We can do that unless you have something you think you really want to report tonight. I just have one thing that's time certain. Go ahead. Um, and for what it's worth, um, if anyone wanted to drop off Toys for Tots, tomorrow's the last day. At, oh, that is um, time certain, yes. The uh, <laughs> South Florida Fairgrounds. Um, they have to enter through gate 8 or 10, and they're open from 8 to 3 p.m. Okay. That's right. it. Thank you. Richard, anything? Jeff? You want to wait? Yeah, I, I, I can wait. The only thing I was going to talk about t tonight was the meeting at yeah, the TPA. Um, the, the, um, I, can, I'll bring, I can bring this up again at the next meeting, but the significant event was the discussion about State Road 7 project being moved down to, to uh, be funding to 2028. Uh, a lot of discussions because one of the issues that, that come into play is other projects that are in the queue and some of those projects may be being moved. One of the other issues is there was a, almost a $40 million increase in cost. Uh, the same thing we've all experienced. You know, the cost of everything is going up and it's going up here. But the other issue for why they had the timeline was that the, the litigation that they're in with uh, West Palm Beach uh, is the trial is not going to be happening until later 2023, which puts them beyond the time window for when the project is supposed to happen. They had no choice but to bump it. But depending how the outcome of that trial is, if it's positive in terms of uh, favor of FDOT, they will look to flex it back earlier. So that's where that is because I haven't gotten people – People are tracking this. I've, I've gotten a few questions yeah, from yeah, some no, some about good, this. So that was discussion. pretty much it. If that's it, nope. anything else? Thank you all. We stand adjourned. And Merry Christmas.